killing an innocent being is injustice, not love. The Bible says that nobody dies being innocent. So, was Jesus yeah. not innocent? That's a good question. <laughs> When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he came as Jesus Christ, he was innocent and blameless. Yes. Okay. So what is the point of killing him then? What was the point? Because Jesus was King Solomon in reincarnation. In his past life, he sinned and didn't repent. Who's, who's past life? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus in his past King, life? Jesus was King Solomon in his past life. Okay. So Jesus Christ is the reincarnation of King Solomon. Yes. Okay. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? All right, Shalom, Mr. Brother Azana Moth. Back at you with another lesson. I pray this lesson is edifying to the lambs and to the sheep of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakahakwadash. And as always, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who do but well and like minded brothers, the 144,000 judges of the new covenant that's coming when Yahweh Shai shows his face. Yahweh being the name of who you eagerly call God, and Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son of God, the Messiah, which means he delivers. And what he said was, he is gonna deliver us from our enemies. So in answering some of your questions on the comment board about who's the elect, why are the elect so special? That's just the comment that I got. And the scriptures say, blessed is a man that readeth, but nevertheless, we're here to edify the flock. All right, and you can start in the book of John the 17th chapter a book of clarity of the architecture in the heavens and it's all red letter from verse 2 all the way down red letter of course is Yahweh Shai and see Yahweh Shai in this chapter had a conversation with his father the most high about the election that Yahweh gave his son okay spirits predestined preordained that he manifested in his name before the foundation of the earth even existed. See, and it's heavy for somebody to understand this, but this is the mysteries of this Bible. All right, this is John 17 and six. It says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me, and they have kept thy word. So the Lord gave Yahweh Shai these spirits out of the world and we came out of this world into the tabernacle of Yahweh Shai and we're doing what? We're keeping his word we're keeping his laws, his statutes his commandments next verse says now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine and this goes into the government of Yasharala all right, the new architects who's going to govern the new world. The house of David is finally going to be at its rest. And all mine are thine and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. Right, the elect actually belong to Yahweh Shai, a predestined, consummated marriage. And like Abraham, right, the woman being Yasharala will be uncircumcised and he had grace on us all of us he also sent the comforter all right to bring in our remembrance of him because we was lost in the sauce before Yahweh shy <laughs> right we was all lost man okay let's get John 14 elaborating on the Rakaha Kwadash the comforter this is John 14 and 26 but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. Okay, so what does that mean? What does John mean by bring all things into remembrance, whatsoever? That means he spoke to us beforehand, right? Yahweh Shai had a relationship with us before. Just like he knew Jeremiah before he was even in his mother's womb. Right? So you got to consider the works of the Most High. Baruch 2 says, In the land of their captivity, they will remember themselves and shall think upon my name. Right? That's the grape of the cluster. The remnant who have the gift of remembrance of his name. Because what he has said unto us 
going back to John 14. Because the spirits that were before are here now. Okay, real quick, let's get um let's get um Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. This is Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. All right, which means we've all been here many times, living out your life in different bodies, but with the same spirit, if that makes sense to you. Okay, Ecclesiastes explains that we wouldn't remember our past lives. Because if you have remembered some of the events that you may have suffered, you know, trauma or death, remembering your children being killed, that can bug you out. So we don't remember the formal things, right? We don't have that remembrance. Okay? That's Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. Let's get that. All right? Let's paint this picture, this eloquent design that the Lord manifested. Okay, this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 11. There is no remembrance of the former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of the things that are to come with those that shall come after. So again, we've all been here before because the spirit lives even though the flesh dies. If you go into the book of Edris, read about the chambers of souls. Okay, the amount of spirits on the earth at one time. Well, the Lord has his chosen of those spirits. So the point is, Yahweh Shai is going to restore the remembrance of all things by the way of prophecy. That's why things are speeding up for the elect's sake. You got men who say Yahweh Shai never existed. Back in the 60s, Malcolm X said, once you're dead, you're dead. You're dead as a doorknob. That's all she wrote. Right? Your body is cold and you ain't never coming back. That's what he said. Now, is that true? Right? Is that true? The flesh dies, of course, but the spirit doesn't. Let's see. Let's get Luke 1 and 69. It says, And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So if the holy prophets existed since the world began, so that means that Yahweh Shai had to exist before them. Wisdom of Solomon 18.15 says, Yahweh Shai leaped out of heaven, out of his royal throne. Right? So Yahweh Shai was created before all this, spoken into existence. When you go into, all right, uh, Sirach 18th chapter, I believe. Okay? And it's all through the scriptures. Which is why we answer this question all right, through the precepts. Yahweh Shai being the first fruit and the prophets, the first fruits of the first fruit, right? Yahweh Shai was created by the works of the Most High, Sirach 24 and 3. We got it right here. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. And we actually brought this point out when the brothers and I got together in Las Vegas. All right, we was going over the scriptures that the Most High spoke him into existence. Sirach 24 and 9, let's get that. It says, he created me from the beginning, before the world, and I shall never fail. All right, he shall never fail because he was born to win. Because he created all things. How can he lose? He's in the volume of the book. Okay, what's that in Sirach 18, the first chapter? He says that he liveth forever. He've created all things in general. That's Yahweh Shai. He's the Alpha and the Omega. All right, a forever power in his celestial state, the architect of anything living, anything breathing. You see that? So the Almighty Word is Yahweh Shai that came in the flesh that leaped out of heaven. He left his higher estate from his throne, right? And how do we know? Because he is the Word. Right? The word was made flesh. That's uh, John, the first chapter. Okay? This is John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, 
and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. All right, so you Old Testament only teachers, you got to reconcile that. You have to reconcile Isaiah 9 and 6. You have to reconcile when the Lord said, okay, this is my son, listen to him. Because the government is on his shoulders. That's what a king does. He leaves his name, his royalties, everything to his firstborn. And this is why it's hard for y'all to understand why Esau isn't the receptor. Well, he sold his birthright. And the Lord said he put by Esau. The Lord said he loved Jacob and hated Esau and laid his mountains and heritage to waste. So you can't question the architect. John 1 and 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Right, Yahweh Shai is the life, and the light is in him. He is the light of the world, and no man or no God is before him. Right, Sirach 18 and 2, the Lord is righteous, and there is no other but he. You see, no other but he, and this is from the beginning. Sirach 18 and 3, who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will. For he is the king of all by the power of dividing holy things among them that are profane. All right, for he is the king of all. So he divides the two thirds. He divides the nations and puts you aside. But he holds his elect dear to him. So every and anything moving, is by the authority of Yahweh Shai. He is the greatest, okay, creation ever created. The voice of the angel, you know, delegate with Moses. The angel in the wilderness. You know, even Abraham offered a tiff to him when he came as the prince of peace, Malak Talzadak, right? The king of Salem, Machelzadak. And when he came in the flesh, he did what? He finished his works. He finished the works before he returned back to sit on the right hand of the Most High. Right? And see, this again, this is the mystery. Who you think Isaac was? That was Yahweh Shai. Solomon. That was Yahweh Shai. What's that, Isaiah 53? It pleased the Lord to bruise him. That didn't happen to Solomon, but it did happen to Yahweh Shai. Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai, to them who are called according to his purpose. Hey Amen. This thing is deep. Called according to his purpose. The Messiah and the elect established the world when they were in council together. To manufacture the works. You see? Because when you go to the next verse, Romans 8 and 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So the elect Hebrew Israelites, they didn't conform to the image of this world. They were pre-selected to conform to him, Yahweh Shai. Some are called and few are chosen, right? So if you understand the few that were chosen, they were chosen not because of who you are or what your purpose is or what you possess, what you represent or what clout you got. None of that. The Lord cares about the inner spirit. And he chose them according to his own will, his own purpose. Again, pre-selected before the world began. These mysteries are absolutely heavy, man. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Uh, what's that? The first chapter? First, uh, this is 2 Timothy. Let me get it. Let me get it. 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Yep. It says, Who have saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, before the world began. So it's not about the works, but it's about the purpose and grace.
that was given, all right, to Yahweh Shai before the world began. And that's why no man can pluck away what's designed and created to function in his eyes to follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. Being again that he chose these spirits before the beginning of time. And that's hard to fathom if you're not spiritually competent to a divine authority that has power to manifest such a thing. You know, I go to Ephesians almost every camp because the spirit did quicken us. All right. This is Ephesians 1 and 4. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Yeah, holy without blame. Because he chose you before the foundation of the world. This is that thing, no matter what you're going through or what you're doing or what distractions, you always come back and stay in tune to this harmony, to this beat that we playing. And it's through the spirit of Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. We're family. Family chosen before the foundation. Even the two thirds, okay, take part in this promise. Just not on the first round, okay? They got to get the second death because they were predestined to reject the adoption. They were the builders that rejected the cornerstone, Yahweh Shai, but by his will and his pleasure, as we'll read it, the elect did adopt him. All right, Ephesians 1 and 5, having predestined us into the adoption of children by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So it's about the good pleasure of his will. You see? All right? So it's not about anything else but the Alahayim, man, the elect. And none of us know. But we follow in orders, all right, doing the will. The Lord said, go out and bid them to the marriage on the highways and byways. So we hoping that we would take part in this. Okay? Because through his redemption, his blood, when his sacrifice... We can take part of this. Ephesians 1 and 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So it's by grace. It's by his mercy. Redemption through his blood was the ultimate sacrifice. Right? So when he said it's done, it was done. The, 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 the deal was sealed. That's when the beginning of the reunion began. This family reunion. Chosen before the foundation of the world. Two thirds don't take part in that. But we take part in that promise. Because they were predestined. Ephesians 1 and 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. You see? So we know the mystery of his will. So when the apostles were asking you how was shy. Why do you speak to us in parables? Well it's for you. It ain't for them. And that's the elect, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Right, according to his good pleasure. We know the mysteries of this banner, of this Bible, of life. Because the Ruach Kodash, the spirit that's in us, is being led by the Lord. And that's his pleasure. Right? That's what he purposed for himself. This is what makes Yahweh Shai happy. All right, us in the flesh, in this worldly environment in this cantankerous place that we still praising him you see so the elect is likened to his his private stock if you will you know a people that would inherit the promises the covenants the law the testimony and the sacrifices the elect are the hierarchy of all israelites right according to amos we know the secrets Right? Say Amos, the third chapter. You see? Going back to Ephesians 1.11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things out of the counsel of his own will. You see? Right? You got to read Hebrews, the first chapter. It's deep. It goes into the priesthood. Okay? So some of us were predestined according to the Lord's purpose. Right. So if you, you know, you wanted to pick your own players on the team or if you drew a picture and you threw it away and you drew another one and kept that one 
It's by your own works. It's your ownership. Well, the Lord manifested this. He is the potter. Right? Real quick, let's get Jeremiah 18. This is Jeremiah 18 to 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. So he made all Israel, right? Okay. All Israel takes part of this promise, but the remnant is his choice vine, which he kept from the beginning. Program to win at the end. But two thirds, as he said, is marred like clay. So when you ask why would he create a people just to be destroyed? Well, because he can. He the most high. And the most high son is Shia. All things came through him. You can't question, hey, Job did that. He tried to question the most high, right? And he got bombarded with an abundance of questions that Job had problems answering. Let's go to Romans, the ninth chapter. This is Romans 9 and 20. Nay, but O man, who art thou repliest again to God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Why did you even form us? Why did you even make us? Again, because he is the potter. He is the director of this movie. So he can do what he wants to. Right? But he still kept that promise. All Israel will be saved, even the two thirds. But they were that lumped to dishonor him. Right? This is uh, Romans 9 and 21. Have not the potter power over the clay? of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another to dishonor right the vessel of honor would hear the word and they would be sealed being hollowed and by the calling okay from the beginning of the holy promise that's the remnant being saved it was a calling that you would be hollowed okay Ephesians 1 and 13 let's get that all of this is tied up together you see, this Bible is a mystery, but it's been manifested unto the saints, the elect. Okay, and we, we again, we hope we take part of this. This is a prayer. Ephesians 1 and 13, in whom ye also trusted. So the Lord trusted certain men with his word. Okay, and they out in the streets preaching. And it says, after they heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed. With that Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah, you heard the word of truth and your spirit was activated. Right? Because it's always been in you. It's always been in you. But we couldn't remember the former things. Right? You know, Ephesians is a cold chapter. Okay? We couldn't remember the former things. Which goes into Isaiah 43. Okay? Let's go to this. Isaiah 43 and 18, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers of the desert. And America is the wilderness. He sprang forth truth through us, through the spirit, man. You heard the word and your spirit was ignited. It was quickened. Let's get that Ephesians 2 and 1. All right. It says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Right. You were spiritually dead. Proverbs 21, 16 says you in the congregation of the dead. If you walk not in the way of the most high. But now we've been made alive. You knew that this is the truth when you heard it. You was quickened. You became a new man. Right? You're alive now. Just like Adam, when the laws were breathed into his nostrils, he became a man now, alive. Why? Because he chose a linear, a pre selected spirits that would always be his, the Alahayim. So salvation is inevitable. So we are his workmanship. That's why the elect is so precious. They've been pre selected by Yahweh Shai. You see, it's already been done before you were born in each life. You've been here plenty of times if you are the elect. 
and even other spirits, you know, predestined to walk in the Lord's ways, to be an heir of his promise. And with that, I'm going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Dash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, Mr. Brother Azan Ha Moth, Wa Ababa Ball, Shalom.